Hi everyone and welcome to the Private Practice with Soul podcast. This is the first podcast for counsellors that just don't align with the traditional approaches to business and that want to use their spiritual gifts, talents and interests to create, you guessed it, a private practice with soul. So look, leave it to me to provide you with everything you need, including strategies that you can use to increase your income, reduce your workload and of course increase inquiries and referrals to your beautiful soul-led private practice. I love it so much. If you haven't done it already, grab your journal, grab your pen and let's begin. Welcome to another episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast. Now, I just want to give you a quick heads up here that if you're not into um, quantum physics and you're not into um, manifesting and you're not into, oh, good morning, Gabe. Gabe's waking up. (laughs) He's just approaching the window, which means there's a good chance he might bark at a kookaburra, but we'll see how he goes. if you're not into those kinds of things, then maybe this isn't the podcast episode for you. But if you're a little bit like spiritual curious, especially in terms of how I apply this to running my business, then absolutely this is a podcast for you because, oh my gosh, <laughs> I am still processing it. So I know that I said that I was going to try and record a podcast for you for Wednesday while I was away, but I didn't. And you're going to hear why. Um, it's so big. Okay, so what happened was on um, Sunday night before I went away, I listened to, was it Saturday or Sunday? I can't remember, but on the weekend, I listened to a, a meditation on releasing money blocks, right? Now, I wasn't even going to listen to this meditation because I deal with money blocks all the time. I help people release their energy around it, their limiting beliefs. I like pretty much thought I knew my stuff, right? Which is the hallmark of someone who actually doesn't know their stuff. (laughs) As soon as you think you know it, you know everything, that's a sign to check yourself. (laughs) Anyway, for some reason, um, this meditation about uh, money mindset and money blocks and releasing them kept um, appearing on all of my devices. And so I just thought, well, do you know what? I love learning. And if there's a chance that I can learn something new, that I don't already know, then of course I'm going to go and um, want to share it with everybody uh, because I want to be better. I want to be learning all the time. So I ended up getting it, but with the intention of, um, as I said, seeing whether or not there was something I didn't know that I could then share with my community. Anyway, (laughs) what ended up happening was... um, I did the meditation, like I had to sit through a a training first and then there were like two or three parts to this meditation and I did them right because I wanted to have the experience because I want to test everything before I give it to my people, right? So I thought, yeah, I'm just going to do it, like nothing to lose, blah, blah, blah. And it was so interesting because before I even did the meditations, um, I had this thought or this voice in my head that just said to me hey Brooklyn do you know what you actually do have issues with your money (laughs) you need to sort this out so just going to it with an open mind so I thought okay fine I'll go into it with an open mind so I did that I did the three meditations and um anyway they were enjoyable enough right (laughs) I don't know what I was expecting, but, you know, money didn't come raining down from the heavens upon me as I was laying there in my bed, you know, um, I don't know what I was expecting, but it, I didn't feel any different after I did it, right? But uh, the next day, so the next day was Sunday, I thought to myself, oh, maybe I should do it again. So I did it again, um, sitting up in the daylight, you know, da 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 took it more seriously um, and sort of approached it more from an academic perspective. I wanted to like pull it apart and see what was going on and everything. So I did this meditation again uh, or the three little mini meditations again, watch the training again. Um, <clears throat> and then I just had the thought that, you know, I was going to um, – set myself a well it wasn't even conscious actually 
So no, that's not true. I was going to say I would set myself a money goal, but I didn't. Um, What I decided to do was just see what was going to happen. And I also heard on somebody else's podcast, oh, Abraham Hicks podcast, that um, she says to say, wouldn't it be nice if, right? So I thought I can play with that. So as you can hear, I was like writing manifesting mode on the weekend. (laughs) So I started to say, wouldn't it be nice if I woke up tomorrow morning to go on my holiday and I'd already made my, you know, my week's income. Now, remember, I only see clients or I only work four days a week for two hours a day, right? Um, if that. <laughs> um, so on average, I generate between like, it depends, but between three and 4,000 a week. And as I said, I work less than eight hours. Um, so anyway, that's what I was hoping to manifest, just full transparency. Um, so I just said to myself, wouldn't it be nice to wake up and have my week's salary already in the bank account before I went on my trip? Anyway, so I just said it and I I just let it go out to the universe. And of course, I was doing all the things like believing that it was actually going to work because I do believe in manifesting. But, you know, I detached from the outcome and I let it go and did all of the things. And then I just went about my day. I was packing, getting ready for my trip. Uh, Monday morning, I didn't even have time to check my Stripe account, right? I just... um, got up at the crack of dawn because I really believe in leaving early for a trip because I want to have like the whole day as you know it's the first day of your holiday right so I want to maximize that so I got up super early um woke Gabe up you know um took him to his babysitter or his dog sitter um he was very happy he was getting a week's break from me (laughs) because Everybody needs a break from their mum sometimes, right? (laughs) I was having a break from mine. He was having a break from his. So anyway, dropped him off and then um, I needed to, yeah, I just had this thought in my head like my angels were saying, hey, you should probably check your oil and water. And I couldn't find anyone anyone to help me undo the bonnet of the car. You know, I want to say I'm such a girl, but that's horrible to say. But um for so many reasons but anyway that's what I was feeling I was my feeling and I started driving around to all these different gas stations petrol stations hoping that somebody would help me and of course eventually uh, when I was at um, Liberty service station in Somerville somebody said to me are you do you need help (laughs) and he was so kind and we got it open and it, it turned out everything was fine but I was so pleased that I checked and I was so grateful and get this um I have high functioning autism it's not something I talk about I was diagnosed anyway whatever um but I don't like being touched I do not like being touched um I'm very close with Gabe obviously (laughs) but don't touch me (laughs) but anyway it was so interesting because I was so grateful and so thankful that this guy who was an old man he he helped me and um the lady who was running the service station she had come out to help as well so they were both there helping me and we got everything sorted out and I was so overcome with gratitude that I was like um can I give you a hug and I can't even believe that I said that and they both said yes so I just quickly gave them a hug and I just felt so um good about that and I can't remember the last time I hugged someone it was just it was anyway so I'm sharing that with you because um it kind of set the tone for the rest of the trip you see because I started off on my journey it's a two-hour drive from home to Dalesford and all the way there I was listening to my favorite podcast but I was overcome with this feeling of gratitude. I was overcome by this feeling of gratitude. I couldn't stop thinking about um, what it felt like to hug somebody. I couldn't stop thinking about what it felt like to receive a hug. Um, I couldn't stop thinking about how yeah grateful I was that they helped me because even though I didn't need oil or water, as it turned out, um, it just took so much pressure and stress and worry away from me. And I, I was just thinking the whole drive up about this, right? And I was fully immersed in the the spirit of gratitude. Anyway, um, so I get to 
Dalesford in the afternoon and I go to my very favorite place. I go there every single day for a couple of hours while I'm in Dalesford and it's um, the Mill Market or Mills Market or something. It's like this huge, I don't know, I want to say like airplane hangar that's been converted into like trash and treasure op shop type stuff um stalls everywhere stalls galore and they've got a really big sort of really beautiful kitchen dining area and I just love to go there the the food is really yummy and it's all fresh and you can see it be made and you get a nice view when you sit down of Dalesford and it's just really relaxing you could spend a whole day there and to be honest with you I have in the past so I get there because um, I want to be there, of course, but also it's too early for me to access my accommodation. So I start walking around. Again, still, I'm, you know, just in my head, I'm like, wow, I can't get over this morning. Like it was such a big deal. Um, and I'm still in that vibration of gratitude, right? And because, as you know, it was huge for me. So anyway, I'm, I'm still experiencing all of this gratitude. And then what happened was... I walked around the market, grabbed a few things, da 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 da, and then I thought I'm going to go to it's called Paradise Bookstore on the main street there. So the main street is called Vincent Street. It's not very long; you can walk up and down it in about three minutes. <laughs> but I really like going in and out of all the shops. So I'm starting to get to know people there now because I go there so regularly. <laughs> And so I popped into Paradise Books and it's like a you can take your books there and um, they will resell books for you. I don't do that. Um, so there's a mix of new books and, and secondhand books and they've got this very small section right as you walk in on Mind, Body, Spirit. So that's my section. So I went in there and I was looking and I grabbed some books by Louise Hayes on gratitude and what else did I get? Oh, something by, oh yeah, another copy of Light is the New Black, Light is the New Black by Rebecca Campbell. And there was a book by Joe Dispenza called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And I hesitated about buying it, but I felt called to buy it. But on the inside, I was having this tug of war with myself because I did buy Becoming Supernatural and I felt it was like, beyond me I couldn't yeah I felt like I needed to maybe familiarize myself with other things before I could make sense of becoming supernatural so anyway that was my hesitation but I told myself do you know what if you're feeling called to it there's a reason for it go with it buy it so I bought the book and uh, eventually got access to my accommodation there's you know two spas there I get in one of the spas with my book I'm so excited and I start reading the first two books and I'm like probably not what I was expecting and then breaking the habit of being yourself was the last book that I had so I thought well I better have a look at it I started reading it and totally loved it um couldn't put it down I read the entire book and for me it's like a thick book probably not for other people but um I'm a slow reader because I like to think about everything that I'm reading I want to process I want to take it in I want to digest it I'm not someone who can read quickly I mean I can read quickly but I don't absorb if I'm not reading quickly so anyway I'm a slow reader I'm taking it all in. I'm thinking, man, this is really cool. Yeah, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. So guess what? I started to try some of the stuff in the book. And uh, anyway, one of the things that he said, and it wasn't even a strategy or anything, but one of the things that he said in the book was that when you meditate, you have to, you know, uh, finish the meditation get up from the meditation a different person and I never thought of it like that before um he was sort of saying that if you sit down and you know you're trying to manifest your future and you're trying to he talks about and we'll go into this in some of the like we can talk more about this in the private practice in a circle um because it's a lot so I'm just going to skim over it but if you want to go into it in more depth we'll do it in the inner circle but um he was talking about how when you um go into the meditation you're entering that meditation as you know the version of you that you are right now um but when you come out of the meditation in order for it to work you need to leave the chair as the person that you want to become okay 
um, you need to be the embodiment of that. And he talks about what that means on a energetic level, a physical level, a physiological level, a quantum level, all of that sort of stuff. As I said, I'm skipping through bits and pieces. But so when I thought of that, I thought that makes so much sense. So I did the uh, meditation and uh, my process simply was following his guidance and I was um, really just tuning into the version of me that you know goes away and makes her regular weekly revenue turnover uh, without seeing clients without doing any work and then when I came out of the meditation mind you I was in the spa but when I came out of the meditation um, I really felt like it's already happened and it was so interesting because then I let it go and I kept reading the book because I was hooked now, right? Because I'm learning and I love learning. I kept reading the book and then eventually it was time to, to get out of the bath um, and oh, get out of the bath, get out of the spa. So I got out of the spa, da, 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 da. And anyway, I went and checked my bank account and I've written it down. I've got it all written down here for you. And guess what? Check my Stripe account at dinner time. And the amount in the account that day, the first day of my holidays, was $3,342.27. Can you believe that? I nearly fell off my chair. I was like, holy smokes, how did this happen? I mean, I'm the girl with like $7 memberships. <laughs> well, they're $22 memberships now. But anyway, so now I'm thinking, holy moly, like, this stuff works. I'm going to do it again. So guess what? I did it again. And I read the book and I kept doing more of the, more of the stuff. And, you know, it's really about, um, the, the best way that I can describe it for you in my very lay terms, in my very lay, um, experience was when you meditate, your, your body goes to sleep, but your mind stays active. And when your mind is active, um, that's how you connect with the universal consciousness. I oh, know I told you, right? <laughs> That's how you connect with source or God energy or universal consciousness or whatever you want to call it. And it's there that quantum physics has identified that there's an infinite number of possibilities, not just for me, but for you, um, which means that there's already a version of you that's doing or living the way you want to be doing or living, right? So um, it's about allowing yourself to tune into that person, tune into that person, um, seeing them, experiencing them, um, you know, seeing the world through their eyes while you're in the meditation, um, becoming aware of what their self-talk is, becoming aware of what their environment is, all of that sort of stuff. Um, in order to, you know, have what you want. And so when you come back, the idea is that when you return from your meditation, that you kind of are that person now, right? So you have to allow yourself to, as I said, play with the energy of it. So that's exactly what I did. I followed it to the letter. Guess what? On the next day, there was $4,041.82 in the account the next day. So I'd made another, what, $700. And I wasn't working. The day after that, the account closed with $5,348.46 in it. Again, I wasn't working. I was just meditating and manifesting. The day after that, my account closed with $6,394.62. Again, just manifesting. Um, the day after that, uh, the account closed with $7,314.49. And the day after that, my account closed for the week without me working with $8,005.01. I mean, can you believe that? <laughs> Who does that? Who does that? Um, anyway, what, 
what I wanted to share with you about um, when I got to day two, so that was the 1st of February, and there was the $4,041.82 in the bank, I said to myself, okay, I want to try and get another $1,000. And I actually manifested another 700 And so that brought me up to the 5348 And then I said to myself, okay, I want to get another thousand. I'm going to manifest another thousand. And guess what? I did nearly exactly that because I went from $5,348.46 to $6,394. So I did over a thousand actually and 62 cents. And then I said, right, I want this to be a record week for my private practice, um, for making money without me physically working in it and that's when it went up to 7,314 and 49 and then it went to eight thousand and five dollars and one cent that was what we closed the week at so all without me doing any work well that's not entirely true because um, I go away usually in the fourth week of the month because that's when I don't have any calls but I'm still providing coaching calls for the ladies in marketing with soul and I made that commitment and I honored that commitment and I still saw them for an hour Um, we worked on their lead magnets and stuff so Apart from that one hour of work, which didn't even feel like work, um, I was able to, you know, reach a new personal goal (laughs) and manifesting over $8,000 in one week without doing any work. I know, I know. And do you know what? I can't even take credit for this. This is is not my stuff. This is, um, as I said, I was just reading the book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. I haven't started his meditation um, program yet because I'm back now and um, I want to carve out time to do it and I need to break my old patterns. I used to meditate when I was in bed, um, which is a bad idea because your body associates, you know, sleep with bed. (laughs) So I just need to figure out what what part of the day I'm going to do my meditations in. But um, yeah, he's got like a four-week meditation program in the book and there's um, meditations that support the book that you get to download from the website. So I'm excited to try that. But I guess, you know, it the thing that I really noticed was um, being so grateful. Like this is the thing you really have to – for this – What I learned was that for this to work, I needed to be able to on demand tap into that feeling of gratitude. And so every time a $7 payment came in, um, you know, and I saw it because I get little Stripe notifications that say when a payment's come through, um, I would be like, wow, this is amazing. This is great. And then I'd try and remember how am I feeling in this moment? How am I feeling in this moment? Because I want my my body to remember. I want my body to be programmed to the feeling of gratitude. So I'm trying to remember all the things I'm thinking, all the things I'm feeling, so that then it becomes easier for me to bring this feeling up on demand, right? And then I started thinking about, well, outside of money because I was just focused on money because I've done all the money meditations leading up to this and da, 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 da. so money was on my my radar but then I started to think outside of that and I was like what are the other things that I'm grateful for what can I call to mind that will really help me bring in this sensation physiologically emotionally and energetically of gratitude um and so I started to think about how grateful I am for my family for Gabe I started to think about um you know little events and of course I started to think about those two people that helped me at the gas station at the petrol station sorry I started to think about them and Uh, that whole experience there and my whole body starts filling up with this um, feeling of uh, gratitude and love and um, 
you know, just warmth. And but I also felt really bright, like bright, like smiling in a really bright way. And my eyes being bright and just the word bright came to mind. And so then every time um, I was doing these meditations in the day and following the, the work in Joe Dispenza's book I was finding it easier and easier and easier to bring to mind that that experience of gratitude um so that was like my biggest week in business um this year so far (laughs) I'm just looking at like oh it was like the fifth week of the year (laughs) Anyway, I don't want to like downplay uh, anything. It is what it is. It felt really good. I was really proud of myself. I was really surprised. I was really um, ecstatic. I felt like I had to share this with the world um, and I want to keep it going. So, of course, uh, my focus has not been on that um, this week. And this is the other thing I've learned. What I've learned is for me, this process of manifesting is so much easier when I don't have the distraction of work and family and commitments and my attention isn't being pulled in 10 different directions. I need to, now I've had a go at manifesting when I don't have any distractions and I can see in black and white the evidence that it works. I think the next step for me now is figuring out a way to make this work when I'm at home and my attention is being pulled in different directions, how do I create space and time that supports a manifestation practice for my private practice uh, around this so that I can continue to have all of the things that I really, really, really want to have, um, such as the ability to help more people who want to be helped, um, helping them build their private practices But I also want for myself more freedom, freedom to look after Gabe, freedom to look after mum, freedom to go on more trips, freedom to invest in more PD and more coaching. Um, I'm rehiring, you know, because I had this burst of money, I'm now able to um, just say, do you know what, I'm going to rehire two of my former coaches, not one, two two former coaches. (laughs) I'm so excited. And I was able to also give my new VA extra hours. So the money that I manifested through the business has been reinvested into the business. Um, And I'm really excited because this is going to help my business refine and grow and expand and do all the things that it's meant to do in 2023. And I just wanted to share it with you because it was a really big experience and um, I wanted to show you what it actually looks like. I've got screenshots of all the Stripe um, uh, balances for each of those uh, days while I was away, the seven days, um, which I can absolutely share if you'd like to see them. Um, yeah, so I just want you to know that it's possible for you. And if you've struggled with manifesting, some of the things I would suggest for you would be um, a find a book or a program that really resonates with you for me I did not expect it to be Joe Dispenza's breaking the habit of being yourself I did not expect that but my intuition told me when I was in that bookstore to grab that book so I got it um So trust your intuition, even if your logical mind is saying this doesn't make any sense. Trust your intuition. Allow yourself to go with that. Um, Create space where you're not going to be disrupted, disturbed, energetically, physiologically, all those things. Um, And practice every single day every single day and you will see results for me now as I said the next step is figuring out how do I replicate this at home um but so excited because guess what I just booked another getaway so I'm gonna go away I'm gonna take another week of leave and I'm gonna try and do it all over again not I'm gonna try I am gonna do it all over again (laughs) um at the end of March start of April so um I'm really excited about that so yeah I just want to show you like this stuff is not BS like if you believe in it it can absolutely work I've got it here in black and white on my Stripe account 
this stuff works. Um, as I said, if you're really interested in learning more about what I did and how I adapted his process to work for me for private practice and put it in the context of your business, of course, let me know in the inner circle. If you're not in the inner circle, of course, um, you can join next time the doors are open. Just let me know if you want to be on the wait list. Um, and yeah, we can arrange that for you. So yeah, I just wanted to celebrate that with you. And thank you so much for supporting me. Like, you know, I am so grateful for, for you pressing play every single, you know, Wednesday and Saturday, like twice a week. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you so much. Have a beautiful day. I hope this was a powerful episode for you. Bye for now. I hope that you loved this episode as much as I loved putting it together for you. To get more resources to help you in your private practice, head over to Instagram. My handle is at the private practice coach. And also, if you want more inquiries and referrals for your business, let me know. I have a program called Clients on Demand that opens every quarter, and I can absolutely get you some information for that as well. You are doing an amazing job. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the world. 